and we are back again with LU decomposition this time using the crowds method so let's simplify so solving the following system of equation with the crowds method all right so from this we can know that this matrix here is a this one here is x and finally here is b so we are concluding that a x is equal to b all right so before we go ahead i'm going to first confuse you and then we simplify it so you're going to take a matrix three by three in the general form which is this now from here we know that this matrix here is going to be our a matrix it's going to be our lower triangular matrix as indicated by the l and then we have this as our upper triangular matrix as indicated by the u all right so what is this whole crowds method and what is this this whole thing we are seeing here remember when we're doing the do little's method we say do little -le 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 little right so the l -le 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 little the lower triangular matrix which is the l the little had ones running through its diagonal right and then for the crowds method which is what we are doing now this crowds method has crowd see the name crowd out crowd so the upper triangular matrix so with the crowd method which is the u the u it has the ones running through its diagonal so remember the do little has the ones the do little -le -le has the ones running through its diagonal for the l part but for the crowd it has the one running through its diagonal for the u one so that's the major difference between the do little and the crowd method the do little has the ones running through its diagonal but for the crowd it has the ones running through the diagonal for the u so do little is l and crowd is u right so just as we did for the do little method we are going to multiply this l and then this u matrix so as, as i've already explained l is a lower triangular matrix and in the u is an upper triangular matrix and for the crowds it has the u having the ones running through its diagonal all right so we are going to multiply this l and then this u matrix so notice how we are going to do it so over here we are going to have a matrix a which is represented by the a here now how do we do our multiplication we are going to take this one from the u for from the u and then this u this one is going to multiply everything in the first column of the l so this one will multiply everything in the first column here then this zero will multiply everything in the second column here then this zero to multiply everything in the third column here and then after that we are going to sum the results that will be for our first column here then next we take the u12 u12 will multiply everything in the first column here the one here will multiply everything in the second column here then the zero will multiply everything in the second in the third column here and after that we sum everything to become our second column lastly we are going to take the u13 u13 will multiply everything in the first column u23 will multiply everything in the second column and then the one will multiply everything in the third column and then when we are done we sum them so as you can see here one times l11 gives us l11 one times l21 gives l21 one times l31 gives l31 then 0 times 0 is 0 0 times l22 is 0 0 times l32 is 0 again 0 times 0 is 0 0 times 0 is 0 and then 0 times l33 is also 0 so when we sum everything we are going to get our first column to be l11 l21 and then l31 we move to the second one u12 times l11 we get l11 u12 u12 times l21 we get l21 u12 then u12 times l31 we get l31 u12 then again we come here we take the one one times zero is zero one times l22 we get l22 then one times l32 we get l32 right then we, we come and take the zero here zero times zero is zero zero times zero zero and then zero times l33 what do we get we get zero so we sum everything when we sum everything, we're going to get L11, U12, L21, everything over here. L21, U12 plus L22, L31, U12 plus L32. That will be our second column. Then lastly, we take U13 times L11. So you get L11, U13. U13 times L21, we get L21, U13. U13 times L31, we get L31, U13. Then we take the second one, U23 times 0, which gives us 0. U23 times L L22, we get L22, U23. 
then u two three times l three two we get l three two u two three then lastly you take the one times zero is zero one times zero is zero and then one times l three three we get l three three so we sum everything then it becomes our third column here all right so now that we are done with the multiplication what we're going to do next is that you take an element from this multiplied matrix here and you correspond it to a, its value in the matrix so from here we can see that l one l one one corresponds to one in the matrix a right l11 corresponds to this one so we can conclude that l11 is equal to what is equal to one the moment you get a value for l11 go to the l matrix the lower triangular matrix and then put the value for l11 where l11 is then we move to the next one we know l11 but we don't know l12 so but we know that l11 u12 corresponds to one in the a matrix so since we know that we can find u12 so we can know that u12 is also going to be what? It's also going to be 1. So you go to where the u matrix is, look for where u12 is, and then put the value of u12 over there. Then next, we go to l11, u13. We know the value for u13 to be what? To be 1. But we don't know, sorry, we know the value for l11 to be 1. But we don't know the value for u13. But we know that l11, u13 corresponds to 1 in the A matrix. So we can find the value for u13 to be also 1. Now, the moment you find the value for U13, go to the matrix U, look for where U13 is, and then put the value of U13 over there. Then next, you come here to L21. We know that L21 corresponds to 2 in the A matrix, right? Meaning L21 is, also, is, is equal to 2. So go to where the L matrix is, look for where, where L21 is, and then put the value 2 over there. Then next one, you come to L21, U12 plus L22. This whole thing corresponds to negative 1 in the A matrix. Since we know L21 and U12, we can find L22. And then the moment you find the value for L22, you go to the, um, the L matrix where L22 is, and you put the value, which is negative 3, over there. So you're going to do this for all the values in here and find all their matrices, sorry, all their values. The moment you're able to find all their values and fill the L and then the U, you're supposed to get the L to be this and then the U to be this. After you fill in all the values for L11 and then the U matrix. Alright, now remember, we are not here to find just the L and then the U. We are here to decompose A into LU so that we'll be able to find the values of X. So let's move to the next slide and then we check for the formulas we are going to use now that we have L and U to solve this, this, uh, this equation using the Krauss method. So in here, we know that AX is equal to B and then A equals LU. Now, since we know that A is equal to LU, then we can say that LUX is equal to B. Now, if we take UX to be equal to Y, then we can say that LY is equal to B. So, let's take it from the top. U, LUX is equal to B, since A is equal to LU. If you take UX to be equal to Y, then we can say that this L part with LY is equal to B. So, meaning if we're able to find the value for Y, and we put the value of y where u x is equal to y. Since we know the value for u, then we can find the value of x because we know b, we know l, so we can find y. The moment we get we get y, and since we know u, we can find the values of x. The question is demanding. So let's do that. Let's take the l y is equal to b. This is our l, this is our y, and this is our b. B is from the question. So the simplest way to solve this question is by solving it from the top, since there are more zeros over there. And when you're solving from the top, the method is called the forward substitution method. So from this, we can know clearly that y1 is equal to y is equal to 3, right? And then we know that 2y1 minus 3y2 equals plus 0 equals, equals 3. And we know the value for y1 to be 3. So when we put that in, we can find the value for y2. So let's take it from here. So y1 is equal to 3. 2 times the y1, which is 3, minus 3y2, plus 0 equals, equals 3. So we can find y2 to be 1. Now let's move to the next one. y1, which is 3, minus 2y2. Y2. We know y2 to be 1, plus 2y3 equals 9. Since we know for y1 and then y2, we can find the value for y3, and we get y3 to go to, to, go to 4. So now that we know our values for y, we come back to the formulas here. Now we know y and we know u, so we can find the x the question is demanding us to look for, right? So let's go there. This is our u, this is our x, and these are the values for y we just had, right? 
So since we know our u, we know our x, and we know y, that means we can find the values of x. So finding the values of x from here, we can we can solve it easily by starting from the bottom. So starting from the bottom, since there are more zeros there, the method is called the back substitution method. Right, so we are solving the ux equal y using the back substitution method. So from here, we can know that x3 is equal to 4, right? And then we can have x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. Since we know x3 to be equal to 4, we can find x2. So we take it from there. x3 is equal to 4. x2 plus 4 is equal to 1. We know the value of... So we can find x2 to be negative 3, since we know x3 to be 4. Then lastly, we take x1 plus x2, which is negative 3, plus x3, which is 4, equals the value 3 here. So when we do our computation, we get x2 to be equal to to be equal to 2. So we have found the values of x, which the question is demanding us to look for. So before we leave, what I'm going to say is that we started with the Gaussian elimination method, where we used the row elimination method to find our upper triangular matrix. And then we use the upper triangular matrix to determine the lower triangular matrix, if you remember. Then later we did the partial pivoting, where there was a there was a matrix called P which used to change any time you swap rows. And then using the, in the same partial pivoting, we always made sure that whatever our pivot was, that pivot was the largest it was the largest number in the column it was. That means that pivot was bigger than all the numbers that were below it. Then lastly, so, sorry, they tell you we were doing the do latest method. And with the do latest method, we said that the do latest method, it has the L, the lower triangular matrix, having the ones running through its diagonal. And we just multiply by doing little. You multiply and then we correspond the multiplied LU to the corresponding A matrix to find our values of the L and then the U matrix. Then later now we are doing the Krauss method, which you know that is just a little different from the do latest method, where now in the Krauss method, the U matrix, which is the crowd, the U, the upper triangular matrix has the ones running through its diagonal. We do our multiplication and then we correspond its values to them to the values in the A matrix. So after you do the multiplication, you correspond your values to the A matrix to find your L and then the U. And then when you find the L and then the U, you can use the back and then the Fourier substitution method to find the values of X. All right. So that's it for this video. And that's it for this session. In the next session, we'll be going through the other methods as well. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your, leave your questions in the comment section. I'll be willing to reply. And then see you in the next session. Until next time. Apatia.